Hey, welcome to the All Stars Cars channel. I'm Glenn, and today we're going to talk about the new tool I got here, the new Autel MS908 SP, and that P stands for Pro. We're going to talk about the differences between this tool, and you may have caught the video where I did a review on this 906. This is the MS906BT, stands for Bluetooth, and as you can see, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to bump the camera. As you can see, that uh, the 906 physically is a little bit smaller than the 908. The 908 has a 9.3 inch screen, so it's a pretty good size screen. It has a faster processor than that 906, so basically it's like it's big brother. But if you have the pro version of this, and that's what we have here, the major difference is, is that this tool can code, it has the ability to code and to also program. So I'm talking about programming modules, uh, if you have to replace a module, let's say it's, you know, an airbag module or it's a uh, body control module, what, whatever you have there, as far as modules, there could be 40 of them in your car. Uh, this tool can help you do it. But what a lot of people don't get is it doesn't just do it on its own. OK, so if you want more information on the system itself, I suggest you check out that video. I'm going to leave it right up here. And also in the description, you'll see the link to that video. So today we're going to talk about the capabilities of this tool, what it can do. Is it the right tool for you? If you're an advanced DIYer, uh, if you're a technician and you want to get into programming, then you're definitely going to need what this has with it, which is called a J-Box. So this is the actual secret. Oop, it's right over here, actually. And I'm going to give you a tour inside of the box with all the different accessories it comes with. So you're going to need one of these right here. And this is the J2534 and it says ECU programming device. So this works in conjunction with the scan tool. Now, something you need to consider is, of course, you know, price is a consideration. And when you buy a tool like this, the price, it'll be, it'll be much more than the basic maxi sys the 906 bt which by the way i've been using it for close to well over a year now i guess i've put the video out less than a year ago maybe back in january and i've got a lot of great questions on there about the tool and stuff so if you uh have any questions or comments you know as they come up just leave them down below and i'll i'll read them and get to those but what we want to talk about is this tool right here itself well minus the BMW and Mercedes doesn't just program cars. So you don't take this, and by the way, this is called a VCI. So vehicle communication uh, interface. That's the fancy word for VSI. Anyhow, um, this device here is a Bluetooth dongle, I guess you could call it, with this tool, where like the 906, you may be familiar with the smaller ones. This is a VCI for this. This does not have programming capabilities. But what I wanted to get to, beside the BMW and Mercedes, we'll talk about that first in a second. What you actually need is this tool it, in and by itself, okay? Of course you need to read data and stuff, you'll need this. But what I'm getting at is this tool will plug into your laptop. So you need a laptop and this tool and the OEM software to do it, and we're gonna get into that more a little bit later. So I'm not gonna try not to make the video too long, but I've got so much information here to give you guys. It's, you know, it's, I'm on a timeline. So anyhow, getting back to this. So what you need to do is um, basically, you know, you sit, you get this tool, it's new. It's very easy to set up. And in fact, why don't I put some footage in here of me setting up this particular tool. I'll show you that real quick and then we'll come back and we'll talk more about the features. So in order for us to start using the scan tool, we're gonna to have to pair the J box, the J2534, which is the Maxi Flash Elite, to the scan tool so when we go Bluetooth, they're paired and they'll work. But before we can do all that, we need to register this tool. So there you go to your laptop and fire up the, hopefully that'll focus there, it's pro.autel.com site. Okay, go there. Now, if you're not registered, it's really easy to do. If you don't have an account, just go ahead and that's all the information in this box. If you do have an account, once you're set up, 
you just go now I have other scan tools so from Autel so I'm already in there I'm gonna fill this information out you just have your ID at your password and then your code will be your capture there you enter that you click sign in so what I'm gonna do is put you guys on the tripod and we're gonna actually register this for the first time and I'll show you where to get all that information that you're gonna need for this so to get the information we need to register the tool right up here on this top right is your power button you hit that it should light up blue when you're fully powered up um, I suggest you pre-charge your unit if you don't have it plugged in as you're doing this and that's this port right here I fully charged this already so um, that's where that is now once you get this little icon you can slide it up or to the right I usually go to the right you get this screen here no problem you want to go to settings let's go back or let's hit menu there we go um, the M down here you see this you have your menu setting I hit the M now this may pop up on yours automatically it's telling me that an internet connection is required so it doesn't know my Wi-Fi yet so click OK and then go to settings now to get the information you need to register you would just hit system settings but um, or about I'm sorry you would hit about to get that we're gonna go set up the Wi-Fi so go to system settings the Wi-Fi is off. Oops, you guys can't see it. There we go. Just click that over to on. And then what I'm going to do is it says it's searching for the networks. I'll find my network and I've got to go get my, my code. I don't know what it is. It's like 20 digits. So I'm going to enter all that and then just click connect and we'll get the Wi-Fi set up. So let me do that. So as you can see here, I'm connected. So we can go ahead and click the back button. This is when you'll use this a lot. Um, when you're using this tool that goes back now you go to the about section um, Which is going to give you the serial number and your registered password that's unique to this tool By the way on this screen here my password and and register numbers up high or serial number but if you need to know what the build date is or how much space you have left in memory that's all on this page right here so that's good to know and now we come to this page here so what you want to do is when you want to register your new your new scanner, you come down to product registration, click that, and it's at now asking for the serial number, register password, and then that's just that code there. So once you enter the serial number and your, your code there, your password, you'll get a list of all your devices that are registered. I have these others. This is the ML619MS906BT. Click next. It's going to page two. And here's our 908S Pro, and it tells you the active software period you get one year. Uh, today's November 16th, it's good till 2021, and the warranty period is one year. So you're registered, you're all set there. Now let's get back to the tablet itself, and uh, we'll set up the VCI. We need to make sure our VCI is going to uh, connect with the scan tool here as far as the Bluetooth and that it recognizes it so to do that we want to go to settings and let's go to uh, system settings and then hit your bluetooth right there bt is bluetooth and it is set okay the factory has already set this and the way i can tell is it gives you this number the max ecf here number if you flip your vci over your j box that number, that code on the UPC should match there. So it's already done. So I can tell you right now that that's good. Uh, let's go back while we're setting this up. Some other things that come to mind, if, like you're in America, you're gonna wanna go to uh, English units. So it's set up for metric, click unit. We're still in the uh, setting stuff here. That's done. Auto update. I suggest you turn on the operating system, the OS update and the Maxisys update. You can do vehicle update, but I very rarely do that. Um, and I'll show you where, where we'll go for that next. So that's that, those are the important ones. I'm gonna do separate videos on how to set up the printer. Um, you actually have to use your laptop to send the signal to that to print to your wireless printer. You cannot print directly from here to the printer, or wireless printer anyhow. So just so you know, and I'll do a video on that eventually. But um, let's go back out of this, and I'll show you the updates that are important. So, you know, this is your main screen. Uh, 
this big green icon is update. It says we got 43, but let's click that. So when there's a big update for the software, whether you just got it or it's uh, you know you've had it for six months, it's going to update all these different, these are all your different manufacturers. And it'll show you if this is coming up, like let's say this Hyundai Kia, there's going to be an update most likely for it. But what we have to do in this case, there's an operating system update. So make sure that your you know, scan tool is powered up. You got plenty of power or plug it in if you're low. You don't want to, you don't want this to cut out on you while you're doing an update. That's for sure. And once that operating system updates, we'll probably have to do a system program update and this libcom and then we'll be able to go ahead and probably do individual updates so let me run let me click you're going to get a green arrow okay if you have an update there's a green arrow pointing down we'll hit that and it's saying back up the diagnostic data in the scan folder okay we'll say okay because we don't have anything on here and now this is going to download i don't know how long it's going to take it's probably a pretty good size one and I'll fire the camera back up when this step is done. Okay, just about done. Just hit 100%. And let's see, now it'll start. It should start installing. And usually right up in this area here is where you'll see your progress. So there's one update. And it's telling us system update. I'll show you in a second. So you won't have to go through this very often. I mean, I think within the last year on the 906, I only had one major update. So usually they're pretty quick. So system program's just about complete as far as downloading, and then it'll install it, and we'll be back probably to the libcoms to update that one. All right, so there we go. With all the uh, updates with the, with the Droid, the operating system, the Android's uh, updated, we are ready to go. So all these vehicles with the green arrow have updates. Now, if you don't have, I don't even know what this car is here, a Bayek or something like that, you know, we don't have that in the United States, I'm not going to update that. So in a separate video, I'll show you how to uninstall the vehicles that you're not going to be using, like a BYD, I don't even know what that is, or Cherry. So we'll, we'll get rid of all that, um, and then, you know, that just speeds things up. But we definitely have BMWs and Volkswagens here and all that good stuff, right? So just for example, I know the BMW is probably going to be a big update. Let's go to Hyundai, and if we want to see what the update is, we click the icon, the I icon, and it just says Optimized Function Menu, and basically that's what that update is. So let's, let's just do this one as an example. I'm going to go through, I'll click them all, they'll download, and then it'll install them all. But just to do this one, it's just like all the other ones, just, you know, I'm going to click show one so we don't have to keep seeing that message about saving data. Gives you the little icon. It'll start downloading just like we did with the other updates. Same process. It'll tell you your status up here, and then you're all set. So let's say I'm going to do the Porsche. So see how it's zero out of one? Porsche. You know, I just clicked that, now it's saying zero out of two. So once those are done, it'll say two out of two, we'll move on to the others, okay? So it's straightforward, very easy. All right, so with the update done, you can see I went ahead and changed my wallpaper, but what we need to do now is update the VCI so that it works properly, and that's easy enough. So go to your main menu, scroll over to VCI Manager, and, uh, this stands for Vehicle Communication Interface is what VCI is if you're not sure with that. Anyway, you go here, it says disconnected. So I have the uh, USB cable hooked up, which goes into the bottom here. And then it's got the standard USB over on that side. So I got, which comes in the kit, by the way. And the USB port is up here at the, well, you can't see me. Let me back out a little bit. Right up here at the top is the USB port. Zoom in and we'll go to update. It says it's not connected. So we're going to do that right now. Let me get that in there. Okay, this powered up right away. Back out a little bit. And we should be able to update now. I'll give it a second here. Let's see. Light turn green. 
and now it's saying checking for updates two green lights and it says don't leave this page during the upgrade make sure your battery's charged up and there is an update we have uh, version 3.04 and the latest is 4.03 so there's a big update there click update now and it completed that fast so that's how quick the update was for the VCI and we're all set so and it says connected go back to up paired make sure that your uh, Bluetooth is on where you're paired it's saying scanning it should notice it in just a second but anyhow, um, now we're ready to go use this in the car. We should be good to go. So once you register your scan tool, you're pretty much set to go. You want to update it and make sure that your uh, VCI is updated. Now you can do it through your tablet or you know your laptop, or you can do it through the tool as far as updating the VCI, which is your J box. But once you do that and you update everything, you should be pretty much ready to go. Now what I want to bring up is the um, the way you program with this tool, okay? I, I want to tell you now, I, I called uh, Autel customer support because I kind of, I was interested in it. I don't have a BMW or Mercedes to program at the moment, but what I did learn is if you purchase a separate key and you have this 908 SP and the J box, of course, with it, that you can program the Mercedes or the BMW with these two tools right here directly, okay? Now, if let's say you wanted to program something on a Hyundai and or, you know, a, a GM or whatever it is, a, a different um, brand, then what you need to do is you actually need your J box, but you're going to need your laptop and it's got to be Microsoft based. And there's all different types of parameters the way you got to set up your laptop. And I'm thinking I'll probably probably do a separate video on it. It's not very complicated, you just have to know the steps. But what you need is that laptop, you go to the uh, nastf.com site. I mean, if you don't know where you need to go. My point is the nastf.com, you go there, that's a free site. What is that? That's the National Automotive Service Task Force, okay? And on the left side, there'll be OEM programming. There'll be a column of, of different tabs to click on. You go to OEM uh, programming, and go to Hyundai, you'll see, you know, the whole list of cars, like every single car out there. And it'll take you, it'll give you a link to the Hyundai site. So my point is you go to that site and you need to purchase a, basically like a pass to get into that site, to get that, to get access to that software. And most of these places, GM does it, Ford does it, they all do it. Um, it's on average, I'm not going to, you know, don't hold me to it, but it's around 50 bucks is what's, what it's going to cost you. Sometimes it's per VIN, per vehicle. Sometimes they'll give you like a 48 hour access to the site and you can download as much software as you want, you know, just go crazy. Maybe you have like three or four Hyundais sitting there ready to go. You, you'd, you'd make out pretty good. But anyway, you would need this J box and your laptop to do that. So... I think what I'll do is a separate video on how to do that. It's not hard, it's not difficult. You just have to set your laptop up correctly, but you gotta know that you need this and the laptop. And in the Hyundai case or the GM case, this is not, this is not necessary, okay? <laughs> I know that sounds crazy and maybe a little disappointing. It's almost as bad as like when you don't have OBD1. By the way, uh, the 906 or the 908, none of the maxi sys will read OBD1 pre-96, uh, you know, DLCs or, you, or, you know, trouble codes. It just, you can't get any live data or anything with it. It doesn't work. So I want you to know that. I discussed that in the other video. But anyway, I hope that clears a lot of this up. Um, Later on, I'm hoping to get in a video. I have a uh, 2011 Audi here that needs a new battery, and it has the uh, a BEM in it. It's called a battery energy management or battery energy module, and it needs to be programmed or coded, I should say, not programmed, coded, and maybe I should talk about the difference there, um, coded to the new battery because their batteries have codes it has to be registered and we'll talk about that more when we get there so while we while we're talking about coding and programming yes that will do both um, coding and this is a very general term the way I'm going to tell you here 
is coding basically uses the existing modules, what you have, a module's a computer, right? And it's going to kind of recalibrate what's there. So, you know, maybe you have uh, your air mix motor, your, your, your um, is at a calibration and you need to calibrate it for whatever reason, you know, they're, they're whacked out. Well, this has the technology to do that. Now, if you want to reprogram, and most of that's done right, that would be done through this tool, okay? We don't need to go on that separate GM website, which I believe is what, AC Delco uh, T, TPS or something like that. I'll put it in here, make sure if I didn't get it right, but um, that's where you would go to get that information. But anyhow, you can um, code and change some things in the existing module, or you reprogram where you have, you're basically starting blank. So if there's an updated calibration, say there's a known issue that leads me to another uh, aspect here, you need to go to a TSB. So, you know, if you're a technician, you're watching this, you're, you, you know, you might be falling asleep with what I'm telling you, but if you're not that familiar or you're new, you're a little green, well, a TSB is a technical service bulletin that the OEMs put out on their vehicles and you're having a specific issue. Sometimes you go in there and, you know, it'll give you information whether something needs to be replaced or recalibrated or what have you, or maybe reprogrammed with new software. So this tool right here can code, no problem. You need the J box for the programming. And I hope that makes sense so that you know the difference between coding and programming. So let's say you had to replace, now that I'm talking about maybe an issue, what if you had to replace it? I don't know, water dripped all over the thing and it's corroded, it's shot, I, somebody blew it up, whatever. And you have to get a new module. Well, these days and age, this day and age, new vehicles, you can't just take a module and you know, you have the same vehicle, let's say you go to the junkyard, you buy a 2017, whatever, it's from the same car. It has to be programmed to your car because the VIN numbers have to match because this all comes down to these computers, these modules talking to the, each other on the CAN bus system. The network is what it is, okay? So that's my point. All those computers, they need to talk to each other. They need to recognize each other and know each other, so to speak, before things will work. And that's why you need to program, okay? So I hope that clears up some stuff. Why don't I take you uh, over to the actual case that it came in? It's a, it's a big case. It's like this big and uh, show you some of the details. I don't want to bore you with it, but there are a lot of cables in there and stuff. Let's take a peek. So let's open it up. Let me flip my screen. Let's open this up. Okay, so you get a lot, of, of course you'll have your, your scan tool comes in, you know, it's on this side right here, but uh, you'll have your paperwork, the manual and everything's here. You get an ethernet, you can connect directly if you don't have Wi-Fi to get this thing set up. Over here in this compartment, um, we have this particular 908SP comes with this, what they call a digital inspection camera, which is a boroscope. So this simply through uh, USB plugs right into the tool here. In fact, let me show you some of the features here and we'll, we'll fire it up and I want to go over some things with you, but this is for your power. You got an HDMI, two USBs, and this is your power button to turn this thing on. So there we go. I already, it was in idle, uh, idle mode. So we'll go over that in a minute. I'll show you some of that stuff on there when we play with it. So anyway, this is your uh, boroscope, and you can also get an optional, which this kit does not come with, the oscilloscope, which is uh, kind of neat. I've never used the Autel oscilloscope. I have a separate one for that. Um, anyway, you get all these adapters. I believe this is for the old school, like Mitsubishi right here with this, this adapter. Here's your power charger. Now up here, let's open this up. Um, more USB. Now this USB is unique because it has this funky shape right there and then your normal, you know, that you're used to. That goes into your VCI right in the bottom. So if you want to plug this in directly to your laptop or to your um, scan tool, you can update and get uh, software updates with that to this tool. You need to update this every now and then. 
By the way, if you're having problems with your, with your VCI, whether it's this one or this one, um, and it's not connecting, your tool isn't seeing it, then try updating your VCI. It may help you out. And it comes with the cigarette uh, lighter charger here um, and some jumpers on a battery, that kind of thing. Now, these are, you know, you have like this GM here. They call it a GM Daewoo. This would be an OBD1, old school, right? You see that in there? And there's your... Well, that doesn't work. As I said earlier, does not do... Um, OBD one, but here is one of the adapters that I have used and come in handy in an E, what is it? E 36 BMW. Um, you know, under the uh, driver's steering wheel, you have a normal port. Um, so OBD port and you can plug in, you know, you plug this bad boy in your VCI right here, plug that right in, no problem. And you can get some information out of that with some data when I say information but if you go under the hood and you uh, go up by the passenger side you've got a round connector there and I forget how many pins this is but um, this plugs in up there and then you hook your dongle whether it's you know if you have a 906 it's this one 908 would be this one into that and you can get a lot more information you get a lot more data so I have used this one under the hood so I can't say they're you know they're not used and this is the uh, Audi you get the Benz Mitsubishi so it's self-explanatory so I just wanted to show you what that's all about and let's um, why don't we fire up the scan tool now and take a peek at some of the features here here's your power button right here this one's in uh, standby so it fired right up now if you want to shut it off just hold that button down and you'll get the menu, you just click power off, you'll be all set there, but we don't want power off. Now you could slide this icon up to M for the menu or to unlock, go that way. Either way, it's, it's going to get you there. So what I want to show you here is a, a little like, kind of like a cheat sheet almost. So let's say you wanted to go to those settings, you know how we got the um, serial number and all that stuff and the Bluetooth before. Well, you could do that through here. You could go back. You can go into system settings and then pull all that up, right? We already did all that, but here's, I'll show you a shortcut. So let's say you're in the diagnostic page here and which would be right there, but either way, no matter where you are, push this down here where you got the Wi-Fi signal and the battery amount, um, just or how much battery's left. Click that, you get this menu, click the little gear and it'll take you right to that screen or let's say you want to go to check the time the time and the date that's a uh, an alarm but right up in here you have all these icons you have a, a, a timer let's say you have to get to another vehicle or there's a certain amount of time you got to do something and then of course you have your uh, stopwatch so that's kind of a neat way to get to that stuff really quickly and you also have a calculator which you know that's important sometimes you're trying to figure out whatever and you know you want to convert liters to gallons or whatever you're doing um, that can be really handy so just sharing that with you guys that's something I learned uh, just experimenting with the tool you know you get the tool don't be don't be shy to go ahead in there and, and you can't really screw it up too bad right so you do have the one-year warranty so go ahead and play with it and get used to you know what your features are because it'll help you just be more efficient with the tool so let me show you some of these features um, you know the diagnostics we're going to go into when we get to that Audi and we'll do that in just a minute but like the data manager here or data manager however you say it you've got these icons right here so let's say image and what I did was um, I took a picture of the BEM programming that we're going to be doing for that battery and I wanted to show you guys so this is the information I pulled up earlier when I had the tool plugged in so we're gonna go through this later but it's really cool because this coding here this this serial number we need to know so I took a picture if something goes wrong when we program the new one and we just can't get it to work or whatever we still have a copy of the old uh, basically part number and the serial number so it's good to have oops let me back at it at that's good to have and like the PDF here so this was a Ford let's pull that up 
And this basically, what's great about it, if you don't own a Maxi Sys, you know, the 906 and up to the Elite, to the Ultra, they have this feature where you you can actually, you scan the, tool, the uh, car with the tool and you can save this vehicle diagnostic report, which is great because it gives you, you know, all your modules like this one had four faults in the, uh, in the FIC on the, the front control interface, you know, where you adjust your uh, climate control and stuff. Um, anyhow, you print this stuff out and what's really good about it is let's say, and this also, a lot of times it'll put your mileage in here. Okay, so you got the mileage, you have the date and time, which is very important. Let me zoom you in a little bit more, which is really important because I suggest you do a pre-scan before you work on somebody's car. Because that way, if they come back saying, hey, you worked on my car and now it's doing this or that, you know, I'm having a problem. You, you changed the uh, whatever you did. I don't know. You put a, you did an oil change and uh, they come back and say, my climate control isn't working, you know, or whatever. My radio doesn't work. Um, this one, what's this one? Power steering or something. Anyway, it's showing a fault, two faults there. What it's basically doing is giving you, helping you with that liability because you go back and you say, hey, listen, uh, on November 19th at noon, you know, you had these codes here, okay? This is, you know, let's say it's like December, whatever. So it'll give you a report here with those codes that we just saw, the four in the FICM and the, the power steering control module, there was two here. So, and give you a description of that. So that's something nice um, that you have there, you have that information and you can print that or share it or what have you. So let's get out of that and let's go to review data and let's open this one. I believe this had the fuel trim. So what I did was, and I think I showed this in the other video, you know, you're going down the road and we're checking fuel trim numbers here. This is short term on bank one and two. And you don't want to look at the screen for safety, okay? So you're better off, you hit record, you pull up the data, you hit record. And what you can do is, you know, you can save all this information, you can play it. So let me open this graphs up. You click these little down arrows. Now all the Maxi Sys have the same technology. So once you get used to it, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. You can make this screen, you know, you can make this bigger if you just want one graph or, you know, whatever you want. You, get, you can play with it and get familiar with it. But here's our play button basically. And you can see the data coming out and we see our percentages like right there were 0%. And this, these were snap throttles, okay? So it went lean to rich. A couple of, this was at idle, a couple snap throttles, but I just wanted to demonstrate you could do this down the road. You can do it sitting in, you know, you don't have to be driving to check the uh, functionality of everything here. Works great with the TPMS. You know, if you've got a, uh, a code for, or a, a um, I'm sorry, not a TPMS, a wheel speed sensor, WSSS. WSS. <laughs> There's so many acronyms they're, hard, acronyms, they're hard to keep track. So you can watch it and see if you got a drop out and everything. It's fantastic. The tool works great. I mean, I, I, I can't say enough good things about it, but we'll discuss some of the pros, you know, some cons and pros to each, to the tool itself. So shop manager, here's like uh, same information or the information you can put about the vehicle. You have the VIN number, the owner, the mileage. You can put in, uh, you know, notes and all that good stuff. So it's it's real simple. Now, if you ever have these are other cars that have been scanned. Here's a GM, uh, Ford, Audi. Let's say we don't want this particular uh, information anymore. So I'm going to show you how to clear that out. What you do is you got an icon right here. Okay, you click this. Looks like a corner of a box with an arrow going that way. Click that, okay, and then just tap whichever one you want to get rid of and you'll get a little check mark. You see this right here in the bottom corner, I'll hit it. Oops, it pops up. That's it, you're all done. Hit your trash can right there and it'll ask you if you want to delete the selected or all. Just get rid of that and you're all set. Let me show you a couple other features. I mean, there's so many features, I just can't put them all in this video, but if you have anything specific, let me know. Here's like the service tab here. Um, when you're in the car and you're hooked up, if you wanna just go right to the oil reset, 
you know, boom, take you right there. Maybe you're gonna program a key, by the way. This does program certain keys, it will do. It won't do it like the IM608, which is made to program keys, but there are some, it's hit or miss. And that leads me to a good point. Let's go to, um, let's find it here. Uh, where are we? Function Viewer. So Function Viewer is, let me show you that. Maybe I went too fast. I don't want you guys to miss a thing here. So, you know, you scroll through, you got your tab here, Function Viewer. Now this is very interesting because, you know, you could always contact Autel support, but if you put in the scan tool that you have, and this has all the different maxi -sys here, maxi -sys, I guess that's a word. Um, we've got it set up for the 908S, which is us, and then put the brand model year. So you would look up, you know, every single kind of, here's BMW, there's Buick, whatever you're working on. For instance, Let's go to the Audi because we're going to be working on that later. It gives you all the different generations, and we're on a 2011, so that would be the 2010 and greater, and then you just click a 2011 as a B model. Now, what this is going to tell us, basically what this tool will do and won't do. So you scroll through and you see the different systems. Here's your airbags. It's got active test, abdet adaptation, coding, um, you know, erase codes. So it's telling you that it'll do this stuff. There's the gateway, which is your, your network. I mean, there's a lot there. Um, if you have the ADOS and your radio, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and name them all, but we're going, here's battery. We actually will be doing the battery. So this is good to look at. Here's your, your BEM, your battery energy module, and you can do active testing, adaptations, uh, coding so um, it's really great so if you want to know or you kind of not sure if your vehicle will work with the tool you can kind of go in there and do that or you can go online to the Autel site and um, check it out there so let me hit the back arrows let's see remote diagnosis is cool um, you can talk to other folks that have a maxi sys and I say other folks maybe a fellow technician or uh, I don't know, your buddy just happens to have one. This is your serial number, so you would put your, of course they have to tell you their serial number. You would put that in there, that information, and you'll get a message if somebody's trying to contact you and you put your name in there. And um, you, know, you can basically share information, which is kind of cool. You can send files and you could also say their they're connected into a, uh, a certain vehicle and you're trying to help them diagnose it or they're trying to help you, they can see the live data and stuff like that. That's really cool. So that's that's another feature right there. What I thought I'd do next is show you guys the uh, boroscope here, which they call the digital inspection camera. So basically you pull it out of the box. It's very well made. This is uh, flexi metal here. So you can kind of, it'll hold its shape when you, you know, put it down in there. All you do is take this part right here and fit it. It's a USB basically. Let me make sure I got them lined up. <clears throat> there we go. And then you just thread this on. And as soon as you um, tighten that and you plug this in, let's do it. Let's plug it into the tool. There we go. And let's fire up our tool here. Come on in here. Let's escape. We didn't get out of that yet. Yes, we want to exit. I'll take you over to the menu here and hit digital inspection and the light should turn on on the end. Of, yeah, whoa, there it goes, a little blurry. So here's our light and um, why don't we, and there's this, here's what we're looking at. It's kind of glary, but I'll, uh, I'll show you, let's see, what can we do here? Let's set this up. Let's set this up so you guys can see. All right, so I know the glare is kind of bad, but here's our boroscope, and the light automatically comes on, and that's what we're looking at. I got this little baby two-stroke uh, piston out of like a weed eater or something, but let's say we needed to look inside a, a cylinder or whatever, wherever we are, and you can basically, I'm going to hold this on the screen. I'm trying to get both in one shot. Can we do that? Yeah, here we go. So let's say we needed to look down in there, you know, at whatever we were inspecting. You know, we're inside a cylinder or behind, an, I don't know, a weird angle on the transmission. 
This is like so hard to do. You'd think it would be easy, but it's not. To film and to do this, it, you know, just watching the screen. So basically you can see, hopefully you can see how clear the detail is. So it's, it's kind of cool. And uh, you can get around all kinds of tight areas with it. Now here's an important one, the remote desks. And what that basically will do is allow Autel support to access your computer. It'll give you a code, a passcode that they have. You tell them, you know, you're on the phone with them. They connect in and maybe you're having a bug issue or something like that they, that they need to get in and uh, help you correct. Well, that's what that's for. So that's cool. And then Quick Link, Quick Link is a quick, what it, just exactly what it is. So you have all these different websites um you just can immediately let's say you have uh mitchell or all data you need to look up a wiring diagram by the way very good point right there this does not have built-in wiring diagrams so um this you have to go to an outside source okay it's not like uh what's the new the latest and greatest uh maxi sys i believe is the ultra so you know it's not it's not the ultra but let's just say you needed to go to, you know, I don't know, Autel right here, it's right there. Um, you're connected to the Wi-Fi. You have access now to um, whatever information you need to get to. Of course, we're hooked to the internet. You can go to, uh, to the World Wide Web pretty easy. So the tool does have ADOS capability. Of course, that's a separate expense or cost. It does not come with the tool. You have to purchase that separately. You need to have the uh, calibration, not just the software, but the actual physical uh, equipment to do it. And um, that's a separate issue, but you can install the key into this unit here if you're doing that. So I don't have that feature. So I hope that gave you some idea. Why don't we, uh, we'll hit diagnostics. Why don't we go get our, grab our VCI right here our J box, which is also our Bluetooth VCI, and go to the Audi right now, plug it in, and let's run a uh, scan on that car. We're in the car, we're in the Audi, and um, I've got the VCI down here. I'm gonna reach up and just push that in, plug it in. You should get one amber light. We've got our scan tool right here. Now, when you connect, this VCI should turn green, okay? So let's see, let's hit diagnostics. Let's go VIN, oops. There you go, it just, it just connected. There's the blue light, so you got a green and a blue. Let's go auto detect. Oh, it's not gonna auto detect, dummy, till you put the ignition on. All right, there we go. Let's put the auto, the uh, ignition needs to be on. Amateur move right there. All right, I'm coming out of the car because I don't wanna hear that door beeping. I don't wanna hear that, that stuff. So here's our, our VIN number, it's real easy. We press okay. And this is a 2011 USA model. And we don't have all roads in the US, but this is a Quattro and I believe the all road is a uh, all wheel drive. So we're going with that one. Now for vehicle engine, we've got a couple here to choose from. Let's, uh, what we need to do or what you should know, I already know it's a CAEB, is you go to the trunk and on the left side where the spare tire is under the carpet, it should give you the engine code, transmission code, all that good stuff that you need. So it's kind of like GM's RPO stuff. So it's a two liter turbo. And that is our, oops, that's our car right there. We'll click yes. I hope I'm holding the camera steady enough for you guys. I don't want to get you nauseous. All right, diagnosis, auto scan. Let's do a full scan because uh, I am gonna swap out the battery. Now that won't be in this video. I may just post a separate video on how to get that battery out of there. I think it's only about what, nine steps to remove everything that's out of there. So it's going through here and um, you see it's pretty quick. So there's a fault, three faults in the air conditioning module. So some of these might not be current, some might be history, you know, we don't know, but we can find all that out in a second. So let it do its thing here. I'm showing you this in real time so you can see how quick it is. And this is a nine-year-old vehicle right here. So the newer cars will be a little bit faster.
great, so we're all set. Let me see how many modules there were. 21 total. So basically, you know, if you wanted to see what faults, like here's the gateway, that's what we're interested in. We're gonna go to the battery. So let's hit this little blue arrow and it should give us what we need to know. It should read the codes. So you got all this information, testing, coding. Um, we're gonna to go to trouble codes. So we have this uh, Z or 03041. Energy management active. Well, isn't that interesting? Maybe the uh, <clears throat> maybe the battery died, and the owner uh, jump started the car, and that's probably why he wants a new battery since it's about uh, nine years old. Um, it's an original battery. So anyway, this is kind of like freeze frame data here when it happened, when the issue happened. Let's see, voltage was only 11.5, so maybe uh, it was just a weak battery. So that's pretty bad. That's pretty low. The car has 80,909 miles on it. And um, so that's that. So uh, in fact, it happened on November 19th, so a couple days ago. So anyhow, I think today's 23rd. So that's good to know. Um, let me go back. Now here's, and of course, we could save this information if we want right now. You can hit this, save this page, save the data. You can go back to it. Um, you know what? I'll just save this page here and we can put the file name in. Let's call it an Audi A4. And my buddy who, oops, an Audia. Wait a minute. I don't want an Audia. That's a new style. <laughs> just an Audi. And uh, oops, you guys see what I'm doing there? And that's it. File information. We'll put, uh, you know, it's just, we'll put bat battery for for kick giggles there and then that's it we're all set and we just hit this hit save and it says saving successful back out of this right here escape that and we're going to hot functions um, here's your programming if you're going to program you know you would just go on that online coding all this good stuff that'll be separate video you know about a little bit about that now here's hot functions Here's our battery, okay? Gateway, that's where we wanna be. And it's just reading, it's telling us our battery part number and our, ser our serial number. So the BEM number is what we need to program uh, this new battery, which I have, it's over there um, by the trunk. And let's see something, let's go to setting. You can touch the arrow down, okay? And that tells you what we currently have, but if let's say you want to change it, tap this white screen. You've got your keyboard, here's your numbers. You know, you want to change numbers and such. That's how we'll change that. We've got to make sure we've got the right brand of battery in here. And uh, we'll put our serial number in, we should be all right. So let's escape out of that right now. And I'll swap that battery out and uh, we'll put code. Now that's our new serial number, the 300 number there. So something to keep in mind I wanted to share with you is a Fiat Chrysler has a device called an SGM on 2018 and newer vehicles. It's the security gateway module. And basically, this it's going to lock you out. So you won't be able to check DTCs, trouble codes. You won't be able to uh, do any bi-directional control. You know, when you get in here and try to check a module or see if the fuel pump's working or whatever you want to do, um, you won't be able to code or program or anything. Basically, you're locked out. But there's good news because for $50 a year, there's a company called Auto Auth. It's A-U-T-O. A-U-T-H, you can Google that and you can sign up. I think, yeah, it's 50 bucks. It's 50 bucks for the whole year. You uh, download that software and Autel has a, a cooperation with Chrysler and with AutoAuth that that software will work here and you put that information into your scan tool so that you're able to connect to those newer Chryslers, you know, Jeep, Fiat, any of those. So just keep that in mind. This will work for the newer Chryslers, but you're gonna to have to pay that $50 subscription fee. So let's wrap this one up. Uh, you gotta decide, you're gonna go with the 906 or you do you want the bigger boy here, the bigger brother, the 908, 
Do you want to go even higher up to the Ultra? That's uh, all up to you. Like we discussed, if you're going to do programming, you're going to want the, uh, the bigger 908 SP. Um, you can go, you know, as far as price point, that one's about 1200 to 906. This tool here is about 2400 and then you go up to like the Ultra. I think that's what, like 3800 bucks or something. So they go up and up, but think about the technology and what you can do with it. So if you're gonna use it quite often, then it's definitely worth the money, no doubt about it. Um, there's not really many cons that I can say about this tool. I, I really like the tool. I mean, one of the pros is it's definitely a lot less money than one of the big names like Snap-on, and you can do a lot with it, but you can't do everything. You have to keep that in mind. Um, the only con like that really drives me crazy, and it's kind of petty, but the VCI, your J box, um, on the 906, you, you got this little donger here, you know, goes into OBD. Well, when you uh, are done your diagnostics and you go to turn everything off and exit out, your scan tool will start beeping at you saying, hey, dummy, you left that up in the OBD port. Well, with that J box, it doesn't, this one here, it, it doesn't beep at you, it doesn't tell you. So you better be smart enough to remember before somebody drives away with your your uh, J box. Anyway, that's just uh, like a small petty thing. But other than that, I really like the tool. The customer support that I've always had from Autel has been great. I personally have no problems with them. Um, I've called there, asked questions, and they've answered all my questions thoroughly. I don't know if they're out of New York or somewhere, but they're in the U.S., and they seem to have New York accents, which is where I'm originally from, so I could pick up on it pretty easy. Um, but the point is, Sometimes you need to leave a message. I've always got my calls returned and it's usually within a half hour. So let me know how your, uh, your situation goes if you've had to talk to them. But uh, anyway, so I hope this helped you out, gave you some guidance, you know, what you want to do with which tool you need, what kind of power you need as far as programming, coding and everything else. That's about it. I don't want to keep on rambling. I do want to let you guys know if you stuck around this long, you can almost pretty much get paid for watching this video. And let me tell you what it is. No, it's not a gimmick. Um, Autel sent that tool to me, like I explained, or at least I think I did in the beginning of the video, uh, to review the tool. And they gave uh, me a code to give to you guys. I'm going to leave it in the description down below. Uh, maybe I'll pin it in the comments. It's for $95 off. If you purchase one of the Autel uh, tools, I believe it's for the specific 908 SP. Uh, so it's like getting 100 bucks almost just for watching this video if you didn't fall asleep. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just kidding about that. But the thing is, um, the, the link that I'll be leaving to the Amazon site is for an Autel US-based tool. So that was a big question I got in the other from the other video is where do I buy this? They want, you know, you guys want a U.S. tool if you live in the U.S. You want to make sure it's supported. They are all made in China, but you want that U.S. support with your warranty and uh, any issues you might have or questions. So you get that one year deal. Now, keep in mind that the one year warranty, you know, once that's up or the updates and stuff, that you can't program with that tool any longer. You would need to uh, renew. You can still use the tool for diagnostics, you know, getting your live data and all that good stuff. You won't be able to update anything. So if you have a bug or something in there where it's, it's kind of wigging out on you, you may have an issue and would have to update. So nothing's 100%. I just want you to uh, keep that in mind. I will leave a link to the, uh, the Autel, the U.S. Uh, Autel, uh, store down below in the description with that discount code. Take advantage if you like. Uh, let me know what you thought of the video down below. I hope this helped you out. I'll read all the questions and comments you leave, so hopefully I can uh, do my best for you. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate your time, and I will see you on the next one. Take it easy.